G'day guys, and today is the first day I've had in about four weeks to actually spend some time maintaining the garden. I only get home on weekends and my last few weekends have been really busy, but this week's a long weekend and I've got a little bit of time to address a few issues that I've been watching develop over the last few weekends. I'm also gonna migrate a few of these bok choy and pak choy that I've got in the propagator up into the big system. And finally, I'm gonna plant some new seeds in these cheap seedling trays that I bought with lids online using the who chose cotton wool method. So let's get started with a quick update and I'll take you through some of the problems that I've been noticing which we will try and address today. First, down here on level one, we've got the basil. Now this basil came out of the propagator and went into the big system four weeks ago. And if you look at this newer growth, it's really yellow. We've got yellowing off in the bottom leaves and they're, they're actually dropping off. And when we look at them all together, they're just not looking that healthy. My first lot of basil in this system uh, at the four week mark was almost up touching the lights and was a lot bushier than that. So there's clearly an issue there. Now I've got a theory about what the cause of this might be, but I'll save that for once we've been through the other issues. So we'll move on to the coriander and I've always had problems with my coriander, but this is no exception. I'm still having problems. When you look up close, you've got these little died off leaf ends and you get a lot of the leaves kind of shriveling up and going brown like that. And I had this with my first batch of coriander. Um, look, this one looks like it's, a, it's, it's trying to bolt. So there's clearly an issue there. But it could be a different issue to what's going on with the basil because it's not the first time I've had this issue with coriander. Now up to the chilies. And I'm actually really pleased with how these chilies are going. Lots of them have heaps of fruit. They are all covered in flowers and they're generally looking green and healthy. However, a couple of the bushes are super dense and when I kind of try and look inside, it's like it's totally crowded in there and there's fruit getting squashed by branches and branches trying to push up towards the light and it's just nuts in there. So I'm not sure what the correct way to deal with this issue is, but my way is gonna to be to pull this rail out and get in there and, and maybe cut some of the middle out of it just to see if I can open things up in there a little bit. And there's another plant back there that I'll need to do the same with. A lot of the other plants don't have that issue. There's plenty of space in these ones and they seem to be going quite well. Perhaps those two are a particular variety that has this problem. Uh, I, I guess I'll know when the chilies grow because there's four varieties in here and I don't know which is which. So I won't know until the chilies come through. Another thing I've noticed with the chilies, and I don't know if it's a big deal, but where I can see there has been some new leaf growth um, and a bit in here as well, it's also quite yellow. So I suspect that might be related to the same issue that is affecting the basil, and I'll get to that shortly, but first we'll have a look here at, remember this leaf curling that I was having, uh, particularly on this plant, uh, but on a couple of the others as well. Now, a couple of my viewers helpfully commented that it was because my lights were too close to the tops of the plants and it was too intense. Now I think that actually was the problem because I have raised the light now and it actually seems to be improving. I mean, the ones that were already curled uh, aren't uncurling, but all the new stuff doesn't seem to be curling. Now that leaf curling is probably one of the factors that led to the other problems I'm having with the basil and the yellow leaves in the chilies now because my solution for that at the time before I realized my light was too close and I moved it up was to change the nutrient. So I had some of this bloom formula lying around and I thought that because the chilies were flowering and fruiting, maybe the leaves were curling because they weren't getting uh, a good nutrient for that stage of growth. But I've since done a bit of research and the original nutrient I was using is actually a pretty good all round formula according to the interweb. And I believe it because it was that nutrient that really got me to this stage and gave me brilliant productivity on this first level with the previous basil plants and a lot of bok choy and pak choy that I have had in here. After last week's update, a few people did suggest that the problem with the basil might be due to my nutrient solution being too strong. I mentioned I had it mixed to about 2.4, but I don't think that's the issue. I've always run my reservoir at 2.4 and my previous lot of basil went gangbusters. So in my mind, it's this bloom formula. And the main difference I can see is that 
the bloom formula has much less nitrogen. And I recall reading or watching a YouTube video somewhere where it said, nitrogen is good for growing the green bits. So on my list for today is to switch out that reservoir and change back to the original, Professor's original. But I'll do that res change after I have pulled this rail out and had a go at thinning out this really, or these really dense chilies. So now I've got them out here on the bench and I'm just gonna go through and I think I'm gonna take out some of the internal leaves just to allow for a little bit more light and airflow to penetrate inside those bushes. Now, I just wanna show you in here how dense and twisted up it is. Look at this branch that has kind of just twisted back in on itself and it's growing up in there in a ball of leaves and I can't see how that's gonna be good for the plant in the long run. So I'm gonna cut that out of there and I've already cut a couple like that out of there. Now around the other side, I'm just gonna pull some of these big leaves off underneath. I don't really know what I'm doing here, but I figure it's not gonna hurt it to open up a bit of airflow, let more light in under the canopy. Have a look at all the chilies growing up under there. Honestly, there's just so dense in there. Anyway, I've opened it up a little bit in there. Hopefully that helps the plant and doesn't hurt it. I'm gonna do a bit of the same with this end one, although this one's not as dense. Let me just strip a few of these lower leaves off. All right, I think that one's okay now. You can see I've pulled a fair few leaves off there, but I feel like these plants can handle it. Right, so I've also come here and I've done the same kind of on all of these plants along the back row. So you can see I've just stripped out a lot of the leafy bush underneath. And now that I've opened it up in here, you can actually see the, there's two plants that I actually put into the system after all the rest and they've been fighting to get a foothold ever since. They've just been crowded out by the other plants. That one's no, not looking too well, but ah, what's it gonna hurt leaving it in there? And just to give you a kind of idea about how much I've pulled off these plants. It's a ton. And there's the chilies back in the rack. And when we look down here, you can see the density is now much lower. You can actually see through there, which you couldn't do at all before. And also we've got a lot more light penetration through the canopy, but up the top here, we've still got plenty of leaves facing the light. I honestly have no idea how they'll respond, but hopefully it's not negative. Next on my list, I'm gonna change out that res before I move the seedlings into the main system. My pH out of the tap is 7.4, so I'll need to bring that down with some pH down. 5.7, I'll take that. And I forgot to check the EC before I put the lid on. Ooh, 2.6, it's a bit high. Uh, the starting the starting EC of the water out of the tap was 0.5. So I might just leave it at 2.6 and we'll see how the plants respond over the next week. Now I'm gonna set up to transplant these bok choy and pak choy into the main system. And I've got one rail here, but I've got these other two spare rails, which I haven't cut holes in the tops of yet. So I might quickly do that before I start any of this work. So I've already got these rails marked out with where the holes need to go. Stage one is the Dremel. And 
and stage two just involves using a hacksaw blade to by hand take those cuts out to the corners. And finally I just use this deburring tool to clean up the sides. And now we have two fresh rails ready to be planted up and put in the system. So I made a last minute decision. I decided to quickly pull this rail out and I think I'm gonna give the coriander a bit of a trim up. This end one, which looks like it's in the process of bolting, I think I'm just gonna remove it from the system entirely and replace it with another coriander I have sitting in the propagator. Now the roots that are there actually look pretty healthy, but last time I planted coriander after four weeks, there was a much bigger root mass than this. So I think this plant's obviously under some stress. Hopefully the nutrient change will fix that for these others. I'm also just gonna trim off some of these other branches that are showing signs of damage, just so next week I can see if there's any new bits with damage. And now that's ready to whack the seedlings in. So here's what we've got in the propagator. And if we have a look at the roots under here, They've all got plenty of roots, which look like they should be well and truly long enough to hang down into that NFT channel. Now, an interesting observation with the coriander. It also has this leaf deadening. Now, the nutrient in here is my original nutrient, but at only half the strength, and I'm still getting this same dieback phenomena and more there in the middle. I just can't explain it. If anyone's got any suggestions as to what's causing this, please shoot me a comment. The rest of this is just uh, bok choy and down this side we've got pak choy, but they're a couple of weeks behind those bok choy, I think. And a couple of corianders in here have actually survived. The rest of the tray, which I didn't have a humidity dome over, has failed miserably. And that's why I think I'm gonna change my approach to seed propagation, but we'll have a bit of a look at that in a moment. Next thing I'm gonna do is get the bok choy out of here carefully so I don't tear too many of those tangled roots and we'll get them into the big system. Right, and there's the pak choy and bok choy all in those rails. So the propagator's now empty and I do have these leftover rock wall cubes they're from the failed seeds, the ones that weren't under the humidity dome. So I'm thinking that I might just replant those with some new seeds and that little patch there will fit under the humidity dome. So hopefully they do a little bit better. But I don't think I'll do that this week. I think today I'm just gonna focus on getting some new seeds planted. I'm gonna use a new technique which I'm trialing and that is planting the seeds in cotton wool and these cheap nursery trays which have an insert, which has holes in the bottom. You just sit in a tray of shallow water or nutrient solution in there and plastic dome to go over the top that gives it the humidity it needs while those seeds are germinating. Now, I might just get this done without going into too much detail for this video. I, th I think I'll do a detailed video on how this works sometime in the next few weeks. And at least that way, I'll have some seeds already a couple of weeks old that I can actually show you in the video so you can see the results. And that's the seeds planted. And in there I've got some bok choy, pak choy, some watercress, and some cos lettuce. And in a week or two, we'll have an understanding of whether this is a better way of germinating the seeds. That about wraps it up for this weekend's garage NFT maintenance. If you wanna see how those chilies respond to the thinning, if you wanna see whether the nutrient change helps out this basil, if you wanna see how these bok choy and pak choy are going, or if you just wanna see how those seeds germinate in the cotton wool, then keep an eye out for my future updates. Hit subscribe. 
If you like this video, hit the like button and thanks for watching. Hydroponics.